The Denver Broncos veterans and rookies are back on the practice field today as voluntary organized team activities continue. What are we having our eye on here today? Plus, Malik Reed excited about competition at edge rusher. Plus, Albert Okuebunan believes he is tied in number one, and that's what he is focused on. You get that breakdown and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back in to a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the End Zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos analyst at Mile High Sports, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. He's the site expert at PredominantlyOrange.com. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News and Broncos country. Hope you had a great weekend. Thank you so much once again for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts and audio format and here on YouTube where you can watch us. Go ahead and make sure you hit that subscribe. Subscribe to that follow button if you have yet to do so already for daily Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. Sarah, my friend, the Broncos are back on the practice field here today. Voluntary OTAs continue, and this will be the first time that the Broncos veterans and the rookies will take the field together. Obviously, no contact. It's all install. It's all against air. But you know what? Hey, anytime the Broncos get back on the practice field, we're excited. And I know Broncos country is excited as well. And rightfully so, right? This is the meeting of the minds. This is like Avengers Endgame, except for it's only the beginning. Like all the characters finally in the same picture at one time. We just need Chris Evans to come in and, and say like <laughs> Avengers Assemble or something right before they all take the field together. But man, it, it's exciting. And, and I think, man, the one thing that we all want to see is 100% attendance. You want everybody on the same page. You want everybody on board with the vision. It's time for the Denver Broncos to get back to consistently winning football games. And in order to do that, you got to be tight knit. You got to have good chemistry. You got to believe in each other. You got to buy in. Everybody's got to be around, I think, Cody. So I'm really excited and looking forward to seeing all of these new players come and compete with the veterans and get out there and start to hear about, you know, the little nuggets after practices of like, Hey, this, this guy's looking really good. Or that guy is really taking steps forward. I'm guessing that we're going to hear a lot about how many different guys Cody are in the best shape of their lives or how they're in the best shape they've ever been in. That's the typical thing you hear around this time of year, but I'm more so excited to hear from the coaches to say, this guy's really showing us something or this guy's really stepping up. But I think the number one thing First and foremost, 100% attendance. And beyond that, it's all about the acclimation process. The acclimation process is super important. And one thing we do know is that we will hear from Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett today after practice at OTAs. You can get continuous coverage here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Sarah Benninger and myself will react all week long to some of the storylines coming out of Del Valley. But you hit it. Uh, you know, 100% on the head right there, 100% pun intended. The Broncos' attendance so far during voluntary OTAs this offseason with veterans has been 100%. The injured players have been there. They've been on the sidelines. They've been in the classroom. They've been in the weight room doing things that they can do, like Randy Gregory. Now, he can't do too much with the shoulder, but he can work lower body. He can work on core stuff. So he's even been there as well. Now, will that carry over now that you combine both the rookies and the veterans together? I don't see... Any scenario where the Broncos have nobody attending these voluntary portions now that they're on the field and they can get these young guys up to speed. I know that Russell Wilson's very excited about working with these young guys and these veterans being able to lead these younger players or the rookies, the undrafted guys, and showing them how it's done here to be a Denver Bronco. That's one thing I'm looking forward to as well. You know, outside of that as well, in terms of acclimation, you mentioned that word. I think the number one thing, and this goes back to just any training camp practice that I've been to, Sarah, one thing I always notice is the veteran guys with all these young guys, because for them, hey, this is the first time actually getting into these drills. Now it's all about the carryover. When they're in those position meeting rooms, you know, from the last time they did a rookie mini camp, uh, you know, all the way up until building up to today's practice at the UCL Training Center, it's really about, okay, how can I take what I've learned now in the classroom and carry that over here? Because now... I'm joining in against veteran guys. So a lot of these young guys will be watching how these veteran guys do things. And it's up to the veterans to set that standard, to set that example. So, hey, I, like I said, I think that the culture right now, Sarah, in Broncos country, I think it's very good from what we're gathering here. This will be a big step here for these rookies. 
It really will. And the great news for these rookies, too, is that you get to be part of kind of establishing the new culture, right? Like the, the old regime is gone. Vic Fangio and his staff are out. Now you get to be part of creating a new culture in Denver where we know, obviously, the main goal is always going to be the same. It's all about winning. But how you go about doing that is going to be different for every individual team. Like the 2015 team, I almost picture that 2015 locker room, Cody, as being super, super intense. Just like everybody realizes, all right, we got one last shot at this type of deal, and that affects and changes your environment. They were obviously able to get the job done. That helps them carry through. That was one thing they galvanized around is this could be our last shot with, with Peyton, or this could be our last shot with DeMarcus Ware. Well, how much different is it going to be in 2022? You've got the first year of Russell Wilson in Denver, you get the opportunity if you're a young player with this team or even a veteran player to say, all right, we get to actually have a stake in creating the culture of this team. That's really unique, I think, for, for the Denver Broncos because in the Peyton Manning era, hey, it was Peyton Manning calling those shots, yeah. wasn't it? And it was him really establishing, this is what the culture is going to look like. This is what I'm expecting, even of practice squad guys remember all the stories about jordan taylor and even brandon marshall the linebacker that <laughs> peyton manning is like that guy yeah that guy was doing great in practice i want <laughs> he needs to be up on the active roster and sure enough it works out great for the broncos but i think now with nathaniel hackett as the head coach he he's talked a lot about this he really wants a collaborative environment and i think for the players Hey, if, if you want to, what's the old saying, right? It's like, be the change that you want to see. Well, I think if you're a young player with the Denver Broncos or a veteran player or a coach or whatever, it's time to really establish the type of culture that you would want to be around every single day because, hey, that's what you're going to be. This is a great opportunity to do that. This is a great opportunity to build camaraderie. I think this is an, an awesome opportunity for these rookies to really prove that they belong early because they're going to they're gonna have to play this year, Cody. They're going to have to show what they can do. It all begins today at the UC Health Training Center. We're very excited to follow all the storylines throughout this week and throughout the offseason, leading us all the way through training camp, the preseason, and then the regular season. You're going to get continuous coverage here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. But coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about Quinn Miners. Hey, he leaned up a little bit, lost the belly, added some lean muscle, and we talk about Albert Okuebunam, who is doing everything he can to be the Broncos' number one tight end option. We dive into the details coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show that is our good friends over there betonline.net and our partners at betonline continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information you can find all the latest odds news and sports developments including this year's basketball playoffs major league baseball scores fights and even next season's nfl futures betonline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs esports and more head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action betonline where the game starts as we dive into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, once again, mile high salute to everybody here in Broncos country. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to both Sarah Bettinger and myself talk all things Denver Broncos football, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day, we appreciate you so much. Sarah, my friend, I had a chance to be in Dove Valley on Thursday of last week. I obviously, started my new venture at Mile High Sports. I'm very excited about that. And one thing that we got to do is we got to talk to Quinn Miners. We got to talk to Albert Okwebun on Malik Reed, and we'll highlight Malik a little bit later here but some things to know a little bit about Quinn Miners coming in I tell you when he walked through the door from the weight room into the media room I looked at him and said man he doesn't look like he did last year like the belly is kind of leaned in a little bit and he was even asked that by a Broncos uh you know analyst and a, and a reporter in the room he was asked a question like hey can we still call you the belly because it doesn't look like you have it anymore He's looking good, and he said that he's lost 10 pounds there because this offense is going to require him to be able to step wide, to get to the outside, to be able to move involving athleticism, and he is definitely on the right track there. He looks really good right now so far this offseason when we talk about a strength and posture standpoint, and now we can see it translate to the field here. But, you know, interesting thoughts here on Quinn Miners. I love to hear that he's leaned up and it's obviously great to see those type of things. We might have to start calling him the six pack. I mean, I, you never know how far <laughs> he's going to take this thing, but man, to lose 10 pounds for an offensive lineman doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're really putting on a lot of muscle underneath that and still losing 10 pounds, that's a significant change. And, and obviously with this offensive scheme change, you're going to need to be able to, like you said, be, be a little bit more mobile, get out in space. And already Quinn Miners was a top athlete 
athlete ever at his position group in terms of relative athletic score. Well, now you lean up and you become even more athletic. That's that's impressive. And I think he's the fact that he's getting media availability, Cody, isn't that fascinating? You you look at the tea leaves or the breadcrumb droppings and you wonder like the, the Broncos are really buying into Quinn Miners as a building block for their offensive line. Now, the question is, and we've talked about this before, where does every little, you know, every detail and every piece of this offensive line fit into place? Because like Quinn Miners talked about, he's taking, he's done some center quarterback exchanges. What, where are the Broncos at there? He even mentioned too, uh, Lloyd Cushenberry has kind of taken the, the majority of snaps with the ones in terms of, you know, what, how much can you actually be with the ones at this point? As, as many times as they've yeah. been out there, Cushenberry has done the majority with the ones, but at the same time, Quinn Miners brushing up on the center skills that the Broncos asked him to learn last year. I guess that he self taught himself at the senior bowl, but the Broncos asked that of him early on as well. I mean, they put a lot on him early on coming into training camp and obviously preseason getting some game action at the center position is a little bit of an adjustment there. But, you know, right now, also one thing that was also brought up too, he was mentioning about, you know, how do you feel about being in a competition with Graham Glasgow? And I loved his answer because like, you know, for me, it's like, this is part of the game. He said, but I don't show up every day thinking, okay, hey, I'm in competition against Graham today. Like he, he's just embracing it. Like, hey, what can I learn at the position? How can I maximize my opportunities? And realistically, at the end of the day, it'll be really up to the coaches. But here's the deal, Sarah. Like, the vibe I get about Quinn Miners is, and some of the talks that I've heard is that he is pretty much being penciled in right now on paper as the hypothetical starter at the right guard position there. So he has mentioned, you know, hey, I've gotten some quarterback center exchanges, but there is an expectation that maybe Lloyd Cushenberry, Graham Glasgow will be competing for that center spot, which really just say if he is going to be the right guard, one of those guys, you know, obviously more like Glasgow, we know can play the right guard position, can be a backup guy there. But what if he beats out Lloyd Cushenberry at the center position? I mean, these are all things that we're monitoring all throughout this offseason. But just really impressed with Quinn Miner's demeanor, you know, for him. He's like, you know, hey, coming from a guy that was, uh, you know, attacking trees and working on technique he's really worked with obviously new offensive line coach butch berry on fundamentals improving some of his technique looking at the film from last year he said you know for me i was running around kind of at, at some point in times like i was running around with like a chicken with his head cut off he says now i understand the process and as i got more acclimated to being on the field i understood what my role was and how it all ties together with the offense and now and learning a brand new offensive scheme, he says it's really fun. Like Russ makes it very fun. It's very focused, attention to detail, and that can only mean good things for this Denver Broncos team. But Sarah, I want to transition to another guy as well, and that is Albert Okwebunam, who we, as we know, going back to a few months ago, DenverBroncos.com, there was an interview, and they said, hey, they, you know, the coaching staff said, hey, this is your opportunity to really beat tight end one here for this Broncos football team. Obviously, now, fast forward a couple months later, Greg Dulcich gets added as one of the Broncos draft picks and kind of that where you draft a guy to be a starter territory. And his just focused right now on, hey, I'm working on everything I can do to be the number one tight end. And I think a lot of that for him is understanding the offense more. And one thing you mentioned is once I get a full grasp of this offense more, the game will slow down a lot more for me. And that's what I hope to achieve as I go on year in and year out here in the National Football League. And that's something that it, just for a really deep callback here to one of our previous shows with Tim Jenkins, where he talked about that exact concept, the game slowing down for guys, you know, the game stays the same speed, but for guys like Albert Okwebunam, what it means for the game to slow down is, is really, you just get smarter and you get better at doing what you're doing that you can play faster. That's, it's not the, that the game is slowing down. It's that you're able to play faster. We talk about that a lot of times with like guy, a guy like Tyreek Hill is the best example of playing fast. He plays faster than anybody that I've ever seen. You talk about somebody who the game has slowed down for them. He plays extremely fast. And for Albert Okuebuna, man, that's one of his best assets. And in addition to the size, you talked about it, Cody, you saw him in person. I, I feel like just, just looking at him in photos, I feel like that guy could line up as your power forward or something if you're doing, <laughs> doing a little basketball game or something. So he's yeah. a big guy. And because he's a big guy, he presents so many different opportunities and mismatches. It's no wonder I think the Broncos, I don't necessarily think they wanted to trade Noah Fant in that deal to get Russell Wilson, but at the same time, they were willing to do that because of a guy like Albert Okuwebunam on the roster who has some of the same physical attributes, but a lot different skill set. And we've talked about that that before as well haven't we i mean we yeah. talk about the fact that just to, to call back the basketball reference again 
Albert O really does play the game like a power forward, and he's very good at body control near the sidelines. He can go up and get the ball. He's tremendous in the red zone, and we saw last year, I mean, he's very good after the catch as well. So, And you don't want to get in the way of a guy that's 6'6", 265 pounds in the open field. So it's it's really good to see the Broncos are putting a lot more on his plate and saying, hey, I, I, yeah, you're right. Greg Dulcich was selected in a range where you would say you probably want to have that guy starting at some point. But at the same time, I think that the fact that Broncos waited until round three, they didn't really go after any prominent free agents. They really did put a lot on Albert Okwebunam's plate this year, in my opinion, Cody, to really say, hey, we believe in you. We believe in your skill set. We believe in your fit in this offense. And we believe that you can be a playmaker for us because with two years left on his deal, he's got the opportunity now to really cement himself as a future big money tight end in the NFL. And will we see him and Dulcich potentially split reps with the first team today? And look, one thing I will say, we can't look too much in who's getting reps with the first team now because this is install period. OTAs is all installed. There's really no competition against one another. It's about learning the offense, installing new concepts. But it'll be interesting to see if certain guys get run with Russell Wilson under center at the quarterback position. Could we see the two tight end sets? These are things that we're watching for as well. But what about the Broncos edge rusher rotation right now as they have a loaded room entering this upcoming season? We're going to talk about that coming up here in just a moment, what it means for Malik Reed. But before we do that, let me tell you about rockauto.com, the sponsor of today's episode of the show. And if you need anything for your vehicle, rockauto.com has everything that you could be looking for. And the thing I like about rockauto.com is that their website is super easy to use, super easy to navigate. If you need to find anything for your vehicle, you can find it based on year, make, model. You get to choose the brands, the specifications, and even the prices that you prefer because prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low. Whether you are a professional or a do-it-yourselfer, why spend up to 30%, 50%, or heck, even 100% more at a local chain auto parts store or a car dealership when you can get them for cheaper, delivered directly to your doorstep at rockauto.com. So check it out today. Go by going to rockauto.com to see all the parts available for your car and your truck. And when you get there, make sure you write Lockdown Broncos in there. How did you hear about his box? So that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. Malik Reed is entering a very pivotal year in his contract with his Denver Broncos football team after making the team as an undrafted rookie free agent in 2019. How might the edge rusher rotation impact him leading up throughout this entire offseason with the moves that the Broncos have made? We'll get that coming up here in just a second. But, you know, once again, Broncos country, as we approach the fourth quarter of today's episode of the show, thank you once again for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Sarah, my friend, hey, we had a chance to speak with Malik Reed on Thursday at the UC Health Training Center in Eagle, Colorado, and the Broncos meet media workroom there Malik coming in and a lot of the questions a lot of people asked him hey you know why did you come back to Denver he had some offers from some other teams obviously there was a, a restricted free agent tender that was placed on him he decided to sign it to return to Denver and he didn't really give any inclination as to like what other teams were interested but he said he wanted to remain in Denver because he believes that they can be a winning team he has a lot of great relationships inside the building and for him he believes that he can help contribute to this team to make them big-time Super Bowl contenders on the defense, whether he's a starter, whether he's a reserve player. I was very impressed by how Malik conducted himself, especially concerning the moves that the Broncos have made so far this offseason. There's a lot of players inside that room, Sarah. There really is, Cody. It's it's kind of crazy to think about, right? It's kind of impossible almost to think of, okay, how does Malik Reed really fit into this equation? Because, of course, we want to see a healthy Bradley Chubb and we want to see a healthy Randy Gregory. If those two things happen, if both of those guys stay healthy, you have to assume they're probably going to play at least 60, 65% of the snaps this year. Plus, you've also got Jonathan Cooper coming back. Plus, you've got Baron Browning you know, doing some work off the edge and apparently looking really good doing so, according to the things that we've heard coming out of Broncos, you know, I guess not. it's not camp yet, but the, the Broncos facility or, or the, the nuggets that are being spread from the Broncos right now. And so that's great to hear. But then you've also got now your new top pick from the 2022 NFL draft, Nick Bonito coming in. It's just a fascinating deal to see, okay, where does, where does Malik Reed fit into all that? Because he's not, I, I would say, and I was thinking about this as we were getting ready for the show. I'd say for me, Cody, the luster has worn off a little bit with Malik Reed back in 2019. 
I think we were all very excited to see, wow, this guy looks like he could be the undrafted free agent that makes a team. He could be the guy that does really well. Well, now all of a sudden, what, three years have gone by. He was a great undrafted free agent. He's started a lot of games for the Broncos in place of the injured Von Miller in place of, you know, every X, Y, Z in place of the injured Bradley Chubb. He's done so much for this team already. Yet. Why does it feel like uh, if Malik Reed is on the field, why do I feel like, man, the, the excitement level is just not quite there at this point. I think the great thing for him to me is that he has a lot to prove going in this year. Like you said, a contract year once again. Well, and I think the thing that stands out too, and I and you make a great point, like, you know, coming on in 2019, we saw him really burst onto the scene in training camp, but also in the preseason. He carried over what was happening in practice, translated that into preseason success. And as we all know, the NFL in the last couple of years has evolved to just three preseason games. They've eliminated the fourth unless you play in the Hall of Fame game. Uh, but I think for Malik Reed here, this is an interesting nugget that I think sometimes gets lost in the shuffle. Yes, while the Broncos the last couple of years have dealt with injuries at the outside linebacker position, Malik has started 13 games in 2020. He started 13 games last season in 2021. And in these two years combined, whether it be a starter or a rotation role, he has 13 total sacks combined. And we really saw him step up in that 2020 season. Now, last year was just a very interesting year for the Broncos because they weren't getting home as much as we had anticipated that they would. So I think for the fact that he was able to come in and have five sacks last season and the role that he was playing, I thought was good. But for him, he even touched on the fact that he's been going through and watching the tape and seeing where he needed to improve as a player and then carrying that over in his offseason training and now being in the facility, being out on the practice field, the new coaching staff, a new in install he's just focused on doing it and, and he understands he said he's excited about competition because you know competition will bring out the best in him and also the guys that he's competing against and for the betterment of the team this is something to keep an eye on all throughout this offseason Sarah I'm excited I'm a big fan of Malik Reed especially in his reserve role now as you mentioned if Randy Gregory brother each other healthy those guys are going to start here but how many times have we heard Nathaniel Hackett this offseason say, hey, we need to have pass rushers that come in waves. It can't just be Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregor as much as you want it to be. It needs to come from a multitude of different guys. And I feel like the Broncos in the last few seasons, sir, have really relied on just a few guys to get home with the quarterback, that the waves haven't been there. We'll see if the Broncos can make some waves this upcoming season on the defensive side of the ball in Broncos country. Once again, thank you so much for tuning into the Lockdown Broncos podcast and your favorite audio podcast and platform here on YouTube. Make sure you hit that follow with a subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Interact with us in the YouTube comment section. Comment your thoughts on this episode. What did you think about Quinn Miners, Albert Okuwebunam? What are some of the storylines you're hoping to hear from at OTAs as the Broncos get back on the practice field here today? Drop us a line. Let us know down below. But Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the show. Sarah Bedinger and myself will be back tomorrow with a recap of all the OTA practices from today, what Nathaniel Hackett had to say. Plus, take a look at some sleepers on the offensive side of the ball here for this Denver Broncos team coming into 2022. You get that and much more on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos.